Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Fold, and today we will be big box store plant shopping at Walmart off of Custer Road on Highway 121 in Frisco, Texas. As always, please make sure you're hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel with the notification bell on for daily one hour plant shopping videos. So today is the holiday weekend and I just wanted to take some time to check out mostly the outdoor section of this particular Walmart. Um, I visited this Walmart a couple of times and unfortunately the indoor tropical section has um, room to be desired um, to say the least or at least to say it in, in the polite terms. So I just really wanted to spend a little bit of time to take a look at what outdoor plants that they have at this Walmart. You know, Walmart has been giving out some great outdoor plants. And I know a lot of our plant foldies are more so into the indoor tropical plants, the aeroids, the philodendrons, but I love all plants. And I wanted to highlight a couple of these outdoor plants. So if you're into gardening and, you know, finding cost-effective, inexpensive um, plants for the outdoors and your outdoor scapes, Check this out and you can see here, we've got a bunch of mandevilla flowers. So mandevilla flowers are um, very common to find at a big box store like Walmart. Notice how they have different types of blooms. I love the yellow blooms right over here. And notice how mandevilla flowers um, can actually harden and get a little bit woody. You can see that this one has kind of lost its leaves. So um, what I've noticed about mandevilla flowers is that they are very thirsty plants. So if you allow them to dry too much, um, they actually, I guess their health just really um, declines. It's a lot, it's like with a lot of plants, but especially with mandevilla flowers. And you can see right over here, we've got some dark foliage plants. Um, if you have been following my plant shopping videos, you know that I love dark foliage plants, purples, blacks, browns, all of those colors on the leaves and even the blooms are awesome. Love that as well. Now this is more so an outdoor plant. You definitely can't really grow coral bells in indoors. I would just feel like they would be really spider mite prone. They've got very um, velvety leaves. And for some reason, velvety plants tend to be a little bit more spider mite prone. But as you can see here, this outdoor section for Walmart, um, this Walmart isn't as large as some of the ones I visited in the past, especially the one out in Rockwall, Texas. If you haven't had a chance, that is probably the number one Walmart um, outdoor and indoor section I've ever seen in the state of Texas. So definitely check that video out on the Rockwell one. But you can see here, they've got some Island Bloom um, Tropicals by Costa Farms. These are for $5.84. This is a Cordyline Hawaiian tea plant. And as I pan over here, we've got a bunch of alocasias here. Now, I don't know specifically what this alocasia plant ID is. I do know that I ended up buying this a little while back. I repotted it in a larger um, six and a half inch planter and it, uh, it's actually doing very well. I am growing it outside. And with alocasias, everybody does mention that alocasias tend to be a little bit more on the finicky side in terms of just how challenging the plant is um, to grow indoors. I just think that alocasias are spiral or my um, magnets and that's what really makes them a little bit more challenging but if you grow them outside um, they do very well in like bright indirect light um, just you know somewhere on like a patio and they, they do very well and I think it's because they have natural predators that can get rid of the spider mites and then I use a garden hose to hose them down so they're always they've always got that like ambient um, humidity but you can see for 584 they've got a bunch of these um, white bird of paradise we've got a bunch of cordyline tea plants now this one is another type of cordyline tea plant that I do find interesting so I love cordyline plants this one has more of like a pink stem and just green green um, foliage as compared to like the maroon or burgundy type of um, cordyline Hawaiian tea plant. I don't know exactly what this plant ID is for the cordyline plant. I do love collecting cordyline plants. So far, I've gotten two types of cordyline um, plants. I've got the Hawaiian cordyline plant as well as the pinstripe cordyline plant, which is a pretty rare one that I found at Home Depot. And so whenever you go big box store plant shopping, never ever um, rule out that you will find an interesting plant. Like I was not expecting that as well as I wasn't really expecting to see another variety of cordyline tea plant here. Now, these are the ones that you typically see. I do find this one very attractive. Look at how beautiful that um, that pink tone is the only problem with um cordyline tea plants and I've, I've you know mentioned this in pretty much every single video when i feature this plant is it's very challenging to grow them indoors typically a cordyline plant has to be grown outdoors because they're just very spider mite prone when grown indoors now they do have some more of the compact varieties that you could potentially grow indoors if i do find one i will 
most likely get it just because I do love the look of the plant. I love the coloration. And you can see over here white mandevilla flowers right here. Um, these, I believe, are for $24.47, those hanging baskets. And as I pan over here, it is um, a, a cloudy day in North Dallas, which is where I'm based at. I did want to pan over and show you guys all of the plants that this particular Walmart has. And you know, if you're going to ask my opinion on Walmart, I would say Walmart is probably the most cost effective, inexpensive plant pricing you can get for outdoors. Like I'm almost tempted to buy a third variegated ajuga plant. Now this is for $4.37. This one is already trailing. And for an ajuga plant, look at how beautiful the variegation is. You've got that lavender color, pastel purple, you've got some pinks, and you can see that it is actually starting to trail. So whenever I think about plants like this ground cover plants that are really meant for outdoors i think about some of the hanging baskets like costa farms trending tropicals or just costa farms exotic angel hanging baskets are i would just think that they would feature like an ajuga plant now this plant has a variety of um, lighting conditions it can grow and you can see how healthy these roots are um, this can grow in um, shade or full sun Currently, I am growing mine in full sun, and you would think that it would burn, but it is not burning. Now, it may change in the um, summertime when it gets extremely hot, 100 plus degree weather, but you can see how vigorous of a growth is for this variegated ajuga plant. Now, with variegated ajuga plants, or even ajuga plants in general, they are more of an invasive type species. I mean, if you look at how the roots are very root bound in this plant, it is a fast growing plant so you have to uh, make caution on where you plant the plant um, if you don't want it to take over your lawn and then here is another ground cover that i'm thinking about doing as another house plant this one is an asiatic jasmine plant just a regular green variety the one i would get and this one is only for four dollars and 37 cents the one i would actually get would be the um asiatic jasmine tricolor it has like a beautiful variegation and this is another plant that easily trails so you can grow that in a hanging basket and then over here we've got a succulent type of um, ground cover this one is a sun rose so this is ground cover for four dollars and 37 cents by garden expert by walmart i love the look of this plant as well and what i love about it is it actually blooms so i would think that this particular plant would need to be in full sun considering it looks like a succulent so plant foldies and if you are new to my channel i call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies let me know if this is um, a plant that does need to be grown outdoor. I mean, obviously it's going to be grown outdoors, but if it needs to be grown out in full sun. So we will definitely check that out. And then I just want to pan over here and just show you what other plants that they have. Here's some canna lilies. Now these canna lilies are um, perennials. So for those that don't know what perennials are, perennials are plants that you can grow in the landscape. And depending on your grow zone, my grow zone is 8B. North Dallas is 8B. And it could become a perennial. And a perennial is basically a plant that will go through a whole growing cycle, die off in the winter, and then come back in the spring or late summer. So those are plants that you definitely want to put in your landscape because then number one a perennial is more cost effective in a sense that you don't have to keep buying the same annual plant to grow year after year and number two they become more of a permanent plant because they make a home in your landscape and it just continues to spread and grow so like here is another beautiful fern right over here this is another perennial so it depends on your grow zones i do like that it has a very diff um you know nice delicate texture to the foliage and then you can see that these are um more ground covers speaking of ground covers we've got some vinca vines right here so i've got a more highly var um, variegated vinca vine than this this is for four dollars and 37 cents but look at how it just vines and trails this would make a beautiful hanging basket plant now i got the one off in um plant um what is it plants and planters another local plant nursery in richardson texas there was even a more um, highly variegated one it's doing very well for me in its container so i have been thinking and looking at these different types of plants like this would be an awesome you know more unconventional type of house plant if you were to grow plants uh, these um, outdoor plants indoors I'm, I'm starting to really look at the different types of ground covers that can become like trailing plants and um, you know hanging basket type plants so we'll see what um, I come up with I do love the variegated ajuga um, this one right here is some type of ornamental grass right here for four dollars and 37 cents it almost gives me that spider um, 
plant vibe about it look at how beautiful the variegation is now i don't know too much about the plant care tips i would assume this plant may need to be more so in partial shade um morning sun but please give me any um insights you have and that's the thing i love about our plant foldy community for those that continue to just go to my live premiere chats at 7 p.m central standard time although i would say this past week has been extremely extremely busy i do appreciate that you guys um continue to support me continue to interact with each other continue to just grow the channel and that's the reason why whenever i'm at a live premiere chat or just whenever you're just like watching my videos the fact that you hit the like button for my videos that is the biggest support and um, i've seen a lot of people come out and really just support my channel by hitting the like button the reason why you want to hit the like button for my youtube channel and especially for my videos is youtube will push it to more um plant lovers like yourself and me and you know that makes it more fun um currently we are about to be close to um 10,000 subscribers so it's really exciting that i have been doing youtube plant shopping videos for the last five months and our channel has really grown and that's due to y'all's engagement so whenever you hit the like button leave comments in the comment section not just in the chat and you know feel free to just keep leaving comments multiple comments i love that i love to um interact with you guys you can ask me a lot of questions and and i also love to hear your feedback you know as long as it's in a constructive positive feedback i am all for it um, I do listen, I do read every single comment, but let me get off of my, um, my rambling and actually talk about the plants, but look at this forest of, you know, different types of ferns. All this greenery is amazing. And you know, even though it is a cloudy day, just the, the mere fact that I'm able to walk around, look at these plants, provide um, company for all of you guys, all of us, you know, that's the thing. If you are a plant foldy, You'll never be alone in a sense that you have friends, whether it's virtual or not, that um, have the same types of thought process, same type of passion you have about plants. Um, like right here, beautiful um, banana plant. This is a red banana plant. Um, you know, my family is from the Philippines and I see a lot of banana plants just all over, just growing wildly. And it's just interesting that whenever you go to different parts of the, the world, certain plants are just more readily available. They have better growing conditions in certain environments. I know that banana plants in the Philippines, they just grow like weeds, they're just everywhere. Now, a plant that I do love, that I would love to put in my landscape would be some gardenias as well as azaleas. Both um, fl are flowering shrubs, both require more acidic soil. You know, I always tell people to make your soil a little bit more acidic. You can actually take used coffee grounds and just sprinkle them and mix them into your soil. And it really does help with the acidic levels. And then over here, we've got some um, oleander. So these flowers bloom different types of um, flowers. Oleander needs to be grown in full sun. I will say oleanders with caution, um, you need to be careful because that is a very toxic plant. Like you don't want to ingest the leaves. You don't want your pet pets to be around it. You don't want small children playing with that. It is a very toxic plant. And I know you plant foldies want to see some of these succulents and cactus. I have just um, really not forced myself to learn about these plant IDs. I just typically show you guys these cactus and just like label it as a sorted cactus if I'm going to do the plant IDs. Beautiful looking cactus right here or succulent. The only thing I know about succulents is you do need to give it a lot of bright light. Um, maybe even full sun although i've noticed that i've ended up killing my eonium because i was top um watering it so you really don't want to water number one you don't really want to overwater your um succulents like they prefer to be on the drier side and number two you don't want to really get their um their their leaves or the foliage wet especially if they stay wet for a long time that can really um that can really just rot them. So that's what happened to my Eonium Kiwi. I am a little bit disappointed, but you know what? That is part of plant parenthood, plant keeping is you end up um, maybe making mistakes, but you know, as long as you learn from your mistakes and really recognize that this is what you did um, and hopefully learn from it and then move forward, then it's okay. You know, that is the disappointing part, but of, of you know, plant keeping is not every single plant is gonna grow well in your care. It may take a couple of attempts to do it. And honestly, some plants are just not meant for you to grow. Like for me, I love me some Hydra Helix. And for those that are new to my channel, I call um, the English Ivy, which is the correct way to say it, Hedera Helix. 
Hydra Helix. So it's just an inside joke. So hopefully I don't scare you, but you know, that is a plant that I love. I talk about in every single video, unless it's literally a nursery or a big box or that does not have an English Ivy. But that's one plant that I have attempted to grow 14 times and I have killed 14 different types of English ivies. Um, but I may end up just revisiting it. I mean, we'll see. But what I do know is that if a plant is something that is challenging, you just have to kind of reassess whether it's your lighting conditions, the time you put into your plants, the growth pattern, just all of that is just a really interesting um, way to kind of assess what is really, um, what really works for you. Um, like coleus plants, I like coleus plants. I love coleus plants. I'm obsessed with coleus plants. I am addicted with um, coleus plants. And I'm pretty sure most people may end up just getting tired of me talking about coleus plants. But again, this is my, um, my plant channel. And I always told myself that I would stay authentic to the things that I'm interested in, the things that I want to, um, to put out there on social media. And that's one thing. I just love coleus plants. And I just think that coleus plants are a very underrated plant. I mean, these ones are for $8.78. You already know I have this coleus plant because every time I go to a store, whether it's a big box store, grocery store, plant pop-up, if they have another unique version of a coleus plant, I will definitely um, pick it up, buy it, and make sure that I grow it. What I like about coleus plants is I never really like explore the different varieties and also the different types of growing that you can do for coleus plants. Like I really didn't think you can grow coleus plants indoors. Um, they are versatile. There are some coleus plants that are sun coleus, which means they can grow outdoors in full sun. What really got me into coleus plants is the colors, but also the potential to get free plants. And what I mean by free plants is coleus are probably the most easy um, plant to propagate from a cutting like literally you can cut even if it's not um like a full node you can stick it in water in literally three to four days there is water roots or better yet actually i'm starting to just bypass even doing water propagation for coleus like i literally just stick them in soil make sure that you keep the the soil wet and they will root and I've done that. I have probably multiplied about 50 cuttings so far of different types of coleus plants. Um, this one right here is a lantana. This one's the ba a bandana of lantana. This is a yellow one for $8.78. I actually want to grow some lantana, maybe um, a couple of varieties out in my outdoor landscape in my front yard. Um, I do have like more of like a rock Japanese garden, but you know, um, with a hundred plus degree weather that I get out in North Dallas, I know last year we literally had about 60 to 90 days of no rain and hundred plus degree weather. I have to be really cognizant about what type of um, plants that I put in my space, um, you know, Lantana are pretty drought tolerant. They love the sun. They love the heat. They're very vigorous growers. Um, they spread and they're perennial. So there are so many check boxes that make that plant more suitable for my, um, my environment. Now it's probably different for everybody else, but this one is a very consistent plant. Like I remember planting some actually in my backyard and they are really starting to mound and spread. And it's just an amazing look for the plant. So I love that a lot. Um, and I only ended up buying these lantanas actually at a local plant nursery chain called Callaway's. You already know I love um, Callaway's nursery. I have a whole playlist actually of Callaway's nursery. So again, you know, plant foldies, especially if you just want to binge some of my um, plant videos, please check out the, um, the plant um, playlist. Um, I know that I will be taking a trip to the Philippines um, in late June, and I will be there for about 18 days. I do intend to kind of just give you guys marathon compilation videos of some of my um, my plant shopping videos, just because I don't know if I can necessarily make all of that content to be able to schedule it out. It is a little bit more of a challenge um, for me to already produce, you know, one hour plant shopping videos on a daily basis. Some days I may miss it, but just know that I do attempt to do that. But I also don't want to um, keep you guys hanging. I do, um, you know, want to go on vacation. So I figured maybe compilation videos of some of the um, videos y'all have seen, they are going to be three um, hours long. So my thought process is um, to have those plant shopping videos to where you can have a um, hangout for three hours to just, you know, go in and out of the chat and really talk to each other. 
I do intend to get lots of beautiful plant um, content though in the Philippines. And speaking of beautiful, look at this coleus plant. I don't necessarily have this coleus plant. I've seen it at Walmart and these ones are pretty full and lush. So I will be buying this. These are, I believe, for $17 and... 97 cents i mean i love the pink um varieties i think i'm going to end up getting this one this one seems to be the most full coleus plant now you know to go back on coleus plants if you are on instagram and if you are on instagram number one please 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 follow me on instagram my instagram name is at growfold you can actually send me direct messages i check my instagram quite often throughout the day i post other types of content for plants on that so that's another um, venue that you can check some more of that out but there are a bunch of european um coleus plant lovers they call them palette leaf and they have some amazing content there as well now what's amazing is these container um, planters that they have this year, or at least since I've been looking at plants, I didn't realize that they have like pre-made containers. Love that Cordyline Hawaiian tea plant. Look at these yellow mandevillas. You know, when you think about flowering plants, I love the white flowering plants. I think pink flowers are great um, and I love red, but yellow is also a nice one. My mother's favorite color is yellow. And you can see here is another beautiful plant. Um, this one is a purple basil. So I don't really grow a lot of like herbs, but what I do like about um, basil is they are great for cooking. They smell great. Um, I should probably grow some herbs, but the thing about herbs is um, they do require a lot of light, or at least I feel like they do. So it's one of those plants that I am a little bit more hesitant about growing plants that just require a little bit more light, especially in an indoor space. That's the reason why I tend to go for plants that are a little bit more low light tolerant when growing indoors. Um, this plant is definitely not low light tolerant. That is a vinca plant. That one is very drought tolerant and needs full sun. And then over here, you know, we see Kalanchoe. These flowering Kalanchoe are absolutely stunning. What I like about the Kalanchoe too is it does have many different varieties of blooms and they're um, fairly inexpensive. So if you're looking for a succulent, get yourself a Kalanchoe. They, they have different varieties, but if you want the flowering ones, know that you have to give it a lot of light. Full sun could even be west for that. And you can see these are some beautiful cherry red bloom. And while this is a smaller outdoor section for Walmart, they have some quality plants. And I would recommend getting these outdoor plants at Walmart and you'll save some money as well. Now, plant foldies, I did want to go ahead and show you this little quick unboxing. I was really surprised and super excited to get these plants from Planting with Pete. He's got an amazing YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked it out already, check it out. But I ended up getting a message from him and we had talked about doing a plant trade. I didn't realize that he would send these plants out directly. So I'm so excited. I um, was offered a Gabby and he said that he was going to chop it up, but I didn't realize that he was going to put in a, um, another plant. So like, thank you so much, um, Pete, for including this. This looks like a variegated Marantha. I actually intended to buy one of these but as you can see right here he has really taken the time to um to pack these plants safely and you can see that they are lo looking super healthy and i can't believe that he got me some gabby i i think he got this from um, his mother plant gabby that was growing up like a pole and you can see right here oh my goodness and it's um in sphagnum moss so i'm thinking he may have separated it but what i intend to do and that's what i did is i went ahead and took the sphagnum off i've got that in water i'm going to probably grow that in water and then what i'm going to do with these gabby cuttings or this gabby is it does have some roots i believe because they were attached to the sphagnum but what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to cut these up into different nodes and water propagate them and make them more of like a um full plant so we'll see but that is so exciting thank you so much your plants are coming to you pete and then right now i wanted to go ahead and take a little bit of time to show you a local plant shop this is one that i've seen this is the beautiful callaway's nursery that is located in highway 121 off of custer road in i believe north plano texas but it really borders um mckinney as you can see here callaway's nursery is a nursery that of um plant Pl um, plant nurseries all over the Dallas Fort Worth area. They've come in different varieties of sizes, but I will say like even these um, treats Ganthia Nanook for 20% off. I will say that 
Um, all Callaway's nurseries have pretty much the same plants. It just seems, you know, you just have to look at the volume. This is one that I do like to sh um, shop at frequently as well. The one thing I will say is this one gets a lot of heavy traffic. So it is a bit of a challenge for these, um, for this particular Callaway's nursery to keep a lot of their plants in stock. As you notice that a lot of their shelves have already been bought out. One Callaway's um, nursery that I often visit is the one off of Pros in Prosper, Texas. They have the same plants, but a smaller, um, scale um, it's not as big as, as this one but you can still get the same types of plants but you can see here beautiful um, rex begonias you've got to love the rex begonias you know i love the rex begonias because they have those beautiful colors the thing about rex begonias that i'm also attracted to is the dark foliage and you will always hear me talk about dark foliage plants Dark foliage plants are just exciting to look at in a sense that look at that. That just looks like midnight. That just looks very elegant. Um, I um, have been doing some Instagram reels. I've been doing some YouTube um, shorts. So if you haven't already checked those out, I like to do compilation of video um, you know, videos of different types of color plants. Like I've been doing a lot of coleus plants, but you know, I could totally do one on Rex begonia. Now these Rex begonia, I believe are for um, $14.99, somewhere around that. But you can see that these are pretty full plants. Now the Rex begonias I bought at another local plant nursery called Nicholson Hardy. They're doing okay, but I would think that I'm probably gonna just buy like these larger begonias. Now, one per person that I know that can grow begonias and is a super expert is my grandmother. Like literally she can grow begonias like no other. She has been able to propagate begonias, whether it's a Rex begonia, an angel wing begonia, all of that. But as you can see here, look at how beautiful this begonia is right here. Now, I thought that every single Rex begonia had a name, but they have so many varieties, like literally hundreds of them. So that's the reason why they have just assorted um, Rex begonias. And then you can see here, we've got some more um, begonias. Those are wax begonia hanging baskets. Love that, but I prefer the one right over there where it's got darker foliage. We're gonna pass by a hibiscus and we're gonna look at these um, zebra plants. So I, I always look at zebra plants, but the thing about zebra plants is they don't really get me to the point where I wanna buy them. Like I always look at them. I don't know what it is about a zebra plant, why it doesn't appeal for me to actually pick one up and actually add it to my collection. Um, I probably should get a zebra plant, I mean, because look at the foliage, it does have some nice um, foliage right there. And as you can see over here, I also have grown to really appreciate um, bromeliads. And the reason why I like bromeliads is because bromeliads have such beautiful um, coloration. It's really exciting. These are only for $24.99. And I didn't realize that there are a lot of bromeliads actually at um, Callaway's. You can see that there are just several different types of varieties of um, bromeliads. This one I haven't really seen and I do like how it has like a um, pastel look about its foliage and even that pink bloom right there is absolutely stunning. Um, there are just so many different varieties of bromeliads. I prefer these types of bromeliads that kind of give myself like a gives it like a bird's nest type um, shape. The other bromeliads I typically see at big box stores, I'm not as big of a fan of. So all of the woods with the nice coloration like this, especially on the foliage, or even this pink bloom is really nice. This is the bromeliad I actually have in my plant collection. Um, this one, I was able to get a smaller um, version of it for only $2.45. Notice how that bromeliad has some water in the middle of its um, foliage. That's pretty interesting. I actually water my bromeliad, not from the top, but also bottom water it instead, just because I really don't want to have water sitting like that. Um, not sure if that's really the best thing for bromeliads. Um, I, I don't really want to harbor standing water just for like fungus gnats and whatnot, but you can see how beautiful that purple um, color is. All of the colors on these bromeliads really look like somebody spray painted these. They don't even look like real plants. And speaking of plants that have a lot of coloration, I did want to pan out to some of the outdoor plants here. This is one of my favorite um, plants. This is a variegated hibiscus called Tailwind. It has red balloons, but I am more interested in the variegation. Now this particular hibiscus also takes full sun. So it's really interesting that, you know, for a highly variegated plant like this, it doesn't really burn. Um, it's one that I really want to buy. It's just that um, at the time, I believe it was like $69.99. So it was quite a um, pricey um, 
hibiscus and it wasn't one that I was really wanted to put out that money just yet but it is a beautiful variegated um, hibiscus the other variegated hibiscus I have that I actually bought from HEB which is a grocery store is called the variegated hibiscus salsa dancer and then you can see they've got many container arrangements so they've got some type of coleus plant with some lantana a spider plant and you can see that um, Callaway's actually makes these custom arrangements of planters and they do have a sale going on right now with Memorial Day weekend happening all of the plants are tax free and I believe on Monday these plants will be 30% off um, you can see right here is a croton petra this one is for $6.99 I have one croton growing in my collection and it is growing outside um, in full sun and it's doing very well and then you can see over here we've got a fern some really large fern and We've got a bunch of proven winter coleus um, plants. These are the, the Color Blaze series. Let's take a look at this one. This is the Color Blaze Golden Dreams. Um, I already have this coleus plant as well. Beautiful plant. Love how it's got a very interesting texture about it. Um, I love how it's got yellow foliage. And I believe this one can actually take more sun. It doesn't have to necessarily be in shade and that's the thing i like about all of the proven winter coleus plants they are all hybridized for the most part to be able to take sun now this one has an interesting um shape to its colors this one is merlin's magic so this is another proven winners hybrid i actually like these coleus as well it has a different um, leaf texture and you notice how it's got different um coloration on it it's got more dark foliage i love the dark stems and i did a feature on dark foliage plants i will continue to make compilations of different plants specifically you know dark foliage plants coleus plants um, neon color plants like this this one sim looks similar to the coleus wasabi but this is a color blaze lime thyme um, coleus i like the look of it as well i am gonna buy this one just because all of the proven winter annuals right now at um, all Callaway's locations are 30% off. So I figured I'd go ahead and buy this. It's 30% off plus tax free. So I'll be saving a little bit more money. And then you can see right here, this is an Acolius plant, but I do like this purple um, Persian shield. I like how it does have more dark foliage here. My purple shield is a little bit larger. It's not as compact as this. So I might end up buy, buying this one just because I want a smaller um, Persian shield. Um, I do intend to try to grow this indoors just because I really love how purple this plant is and it's got a very shiny texture to the leaves and then over here is one of my favorite coleus plants. I would say this fishnet stockings coleus plant is one of my favorites because look at the coloration of this. I love the veining, that purple veining and red veining and even the purple stems. There's just a lot of color um, going on with this one now. If you look at the different um, fishnet stockings, that one had very pronounced um, veining this one doesn't this one actually is the same plant same coleus plant but it has more of um white texture white cream um on it now what's interesting is the pots here are not actually plastic pots they're biodegradable so i really like that you know proven winners is really pushing the envelope of like using less plastic containers just so that there's not as big of a carbon footprint if, in case these plants um don't make it you know a lot of the plants that you see at a big box or it'll end up in the trash and then there's all that um plastic and then over here this is another eco grade zero plastic um container by proven winners this is the no, the other one that you see often, this is the Cherry um, Brandy, I think that's what it's called. Another Color Blaze series, and this one can take full sun or a lot more sun than a typical coleus plant. And um, I just love how it's got a nice maroon tone about it. It is a beautiful plant. I love coleus plants. You already know I will be featuring a lot of coleus plants throughout this um, Callaway's tour. And you know, plant shopping during Memorial Day weekend, you get some really good sales. So I will try to get some more videos out. And then over here, we've got some Caladium. So this one is a heart to heart series, White Wonder. And I do love the Caladiums. Now with Caladiums, um, pretty much all Caladiums need to be in shade or in, um, you know, away from direct sun, otherwise they will burn. But look at how white that Caladium is. It's beautiful. And then this is another proven winners and you can see they are 30 percent off plus tax free so 38 percent off is what i will be saving today if i were to buy some proven winner annuals and then over here this is another heart to heart chinook is what it's called this caladium now caladiums grow from bulbs and one thing you have to water um you know worry about with caladiums is over watering them 
because if you overwater caladiums, you can actually rot the bulb, which will end up killing the plant. Um, caladiums are fairly easy. It is a plant that I would um, try to grow indoors. I know that a couple of plant foldies have mentioned they are growing them indoors. This one is a lemon bush um, a heart to heart caladium that's a really pretty looking caladium too notice how they have such different varieties of caladiums and with caladiums they have hybridized it to where they got uh, have gotten different colors different types of leaf shapes and you know i have to show you guys lantana so like this is the particular um outdoor flower or flowering bush however you want to call it or ground cover i would actually consider it a flowering ground cover that i think everybody should grow especially if you have a southern garden you know a place where you get really hot weather um, lantanas again are fast growing they're easy to grow they're easy to propagate from rootings actually and they are perennial they can grow in very hot conditions and they definitely need to be in full sun so a thing about one of my um, lantanas is it's in a little bit more of a shaded area it doesn't get nearly as much sun and that one is not as fast growing nor is it really producing a lot of bloom so light really influences lantanas and as i pan over here notice how large this Callaway's nursery is specifically the outdoor section i love how every callaway's nursery is merchandised differently but the one thing that's in um, that's common of all uh, callaway's nurseries is that they are um they've got some very beautiful plants a great selection and again this is another variegated hibiscus that i just can't get over i love the variegation now i have gone broke just buying plants on a daily basis almost just because i do plant shopping videos daily so if you made it this far into the video and you have not hit the subscribe button please make sure you are hitting the subscribe button with the notification bell on um, if you don't have the notification bell on you may not get the updates because sometimes i'll post polls i'll post shorts videos videos i'll premiere at an odd time sometimes i don't always make it to 7 p.m but if you have the notification bell on it should notify you when i do come up with a new video or some type of content for the youtube channel and you can see right here these ones are for i believe 2.99 these starters of all of these pink caladiums um, i like caladiums specifically because i do like the shape but i also like the fact that there's a lot of caladiums that have pink i love pink plants and you can notice that this one right here has some more larger foliage not all caladiums can get large foliage but it is so interesting to see um, here is a coleus flamethrower habanero series so these flamethrower coleus plants they have different varieties of them this one is one that can actually take full sun. So the flamethrower series of coleus plants can tolerate more, um, more full sun or just more light in general. And you can see as I pass over, there is another container with a variegated hibiscus. Now this whole container can be bought for $549.99. I, I suppose if you already have that beautiful container, that's already a pretty expensive container, plus all of these plants already mixed in. The only thing I would say is you really wanna make sure that if you have a mixed container of plants, all of the plants have the same lighting conditions and care conditions. Cause like you don't wanna put like caladiums with that very variegated um, hibiscus tailwind because that um, hibiscus plants needs full sun same thing with this dahlia right here this takes full sun as well dahlias are plants that i um, entertain to grow this year but since it is already heading into the summer i don't want to put too many things into my landscape i may revisit that next year i have only really started doing more plant shopping videos and just plant content in the last five months you know originally my videos were mostly origami asmr and so um, for those that are interested on why I call my channel Grow Folds, it was really to merge um, my plant love as well as my um, love for origami, especially um, folding origami paper cranes. Um, one thing that I do on a daily basis is fold origami paper cranes. I can literally fold one. The fastest I've been able to do it is under 30 seconds. My goal to, is to be able to fold 1 million paper cranes. I would say that I've been folding paper cranes daily for the last seven years, and it's check this coleus out these are called kong coleus look at how large that leaf is it is even larger than my hand beautiful um kong coleus mosaic look at that color here now with all of these large leaf coleus plants they definitely cannot tolerate being in like direct light or full sun now they do need bright indirect light uh, preferably morning sun in order to get all of that beautiful coloration kong coleus um, there are many different varieties of kong coleus and i'll try to show you a little bit more we will see if uh, what else we got over here but you can see they've got some of these purple flowers right over here 
look at that i'm not 100 percent sure what that is but you can see that um the variegated tailwind hibiscus has red blooms i really love this plant like i would even want to just get a cutting from this and propagate it i really want that plant but it is a little bit pricey it is about, um, about 70 dollars, and i don't know if i really want to invest in that so plant foldies if you guys want to help me out with some funds you are more than welcome to drop a super sticker during my um, live premiere chats you know i've seen some people tip me out before not that you're expected or am i expecting but if you ever want to donate to my plant obsession fund um, to show some support you can definitely do that but honestly the biggest support you can do for me is just to hit the like button on my video and definitely leave as many comments as you want during um, in the comment section after you watch this video or even during this video you can do live um, timestamps on like what plants you like give me some insights all of that I love video engagement and that's the reason why I really want to see our plant foldy community grow I've seen some people discover my videos in the last couple of weeks from other countries like jamaica i really love that so feel free to share my videos if you have any social medias with any plant video um, facebook groups or anything like that nature i would love that a lot and you can see here i am drawn to ajuga plant so these are the variegated ajuga plants but notice how these um, are not as pink and like purple as some of the ones that i just showed you earlier in the video at walmart so you know big box store plant shopping videos as well as callaway nursery plant shopping videos i like to merge both so you can kind of see especially if you are a local plant foldy or somebody that lives in the dallas fort worth area these are places that are very accessible to you and so i hope that my um local that live in the Dallas Fort Worth area will definitely hit the subscribe button that way you are always in tune because for the most part I am literally in most of these um, North Dallas big box stores Callaway's nurseries um, local plant nurseries all over the Dallas Fort Worth area to just kind of report what type of video um, plants are coming into our market now this is an interesting ajuga plant this is a chocolate chip dip um, ajuga plant this one has more narrow leaves um, this is another plant that I would think would get darker foliage with just more light that it hits it so I may consider buying this particular ajuga and this golden jenny is a beautiful plant so I love these blue label plants these are for $14.99 um, look at how beautiful that neon color is so you know when you talk about colors dark foliage plants um and neon plants those are some of my plants that i absolutely love and then you can see i'm going to pan over here and just kind of show you what they have i'm not going to go into detail but you can see that they've got a lot of outdoor landscaping plants and then we've got several hanging baskets now all of the hanging baskets are on sale for 30 percent off so if you're into hanging baskets you can definitely get them at callaways today 30 percent off plus the um, tax free so if you are looking to save some money this weekend and you're not working definitely hit any callaway nursery to get those deals and then you can see right over here this is some type of variegated plant that i find interesting i don't know if it's necessarily a ground cover it is by monrova so it's a little bit more pricey monrova plum plants are a little bit more pricey but i do like that variegation i am always on the lookout for different types of ground covers you know i've mentioned this earlier in the video but ground cover plants that are grown outside could potentially be indoor plants that you can have trail or grow in a hanging basket and speaking Speaking of plants, so like I really did dabble on potentially trying to grow hostas indoors. I need to do a little bit more research, but most people say that that's not best the best um, plant to grow indoors. Like I love this um, fire and ice um, hosta. Look at that variegation. It's $16.99. Now, um, I could potentially grow hostas in my space. I have some shade and they are perennials for my grow zone, which is 8B. I love that green on green variegation. You've got cream variegation. You've got neon color type um, hostas and you can see they do get large and I've seen them come back year after year from some of my um, friends that have grown them in this area. So I think that's super cool. And then obviously we're going to be looking at everybody's favorite it and that is the hedra helix now these um hedera helix which is a, the correct way to say it or english ivy this is just a typical one this one is for two dollars and 49 cents and then we've got some swedish ivy right here i have the swedish ivy the white edge one that has white variegation but you know swedish ivy are so easy they are very quick growers they um they prefer to be more in like 
um, shaded areas as compared to like full sun or anything. I don't think that's the best place to put them. I have two different types of um, uh, Swedish Ivy. I have the white edge one as well as the guacamole one, which is more of the green on green variegation. I actually found that Ivy, Swedish Ivy at HEB, which is a grocery store in Texas only that I typically find my plants, but you can see how full these this Callaway's nursery is. And whenever I really want to do an in-depth tour of plants, just to show you plants, I will go to a Callaway's nursery and show you. Like here is another trailing Hydra Helix. Love this Hedera Helix English Ivy. And you know, when you talk about English Ivy, um, these plants are pretty invasive if they are in the um you know like areas that are a little bit cooler and more humidity they definitely will crawl up like um, walls on buildings and just become a whole wall of like english ivy that's the thing about english ivy they are a little bit more invasive outdoors now when you grow them indoors they're just basically a spider mite um, magnet that will eventually just decline in itself like i just don't think that long-term english ivy can grow however my best friend isaac who also has a youtube channel his um youtube channel is hi jr sings he does mostly pageant content but he does have a hedera helix english ivy and his has been growing and he actually neglects it. So I don't know, maybe some some plants choose to do perform better for others or plant keepers. I, I'm not 100% sure, but as you can see here, Callaway's also um, host a bunch of my favorite plants and that would be Acer palmatum or Japanese maples. All of those were large um, specimen Japanese maples. Now these are um, Japanese maples that are gonna range from like uh, 1,800 to 2,000 plus dollars. And the reason why they're a little bit more pricey is Japanese Japanese maples are um, very slow growing trees. I do want to show you another type of planter I like to use, and it's literally just the classic terracotta planters. There's something um, very traditional, but very classy about terracotta planters. Now for terracotta planters, I do um, recommend it for people who are over waterers because if you um, put a plant in terracotta, it tends to dry the soil up a little bit faster because it actually pulls out the moisture. So if you are an overwaterer, um, terracotta planters are great for you. Now for me, I need plastic planters because I don't really water my plants as much as I should. Now I do want to show you this. This is an interesting heart-shaped leaf type of um, um, plant. Um, obviously this is um, meant to be grown outdoors. I do like the color of it. That gray silvery tone is very nice. So this again is part of the blue label um, series of plants. And what else do we have here? Um, it looks like they just got done watering these plants. And that's the thing about local plant nursery shopping. Know that all of the plants that you will typically find at a local plant nursery will be healthier and you'll be able to get a little bit more of the care tips from the staff. Um, I don't want to sound like I am bashing big boxers because I am an advocate for big box store plants. I feel like you will get some really cost effective pricing. But if you're looking for a particular plant that you really want to ensure that the health is there, the selection is there, I would always recommend going to a local plant nursery. You know, I did a feature last night for PETA's Planters, which is a local plant shop in Dallas, Texas. It's one of my favorite places to go shopping, not only because even though it is a small business i love um just getting to know the owners they really have a great story they are kind people so if you ever get a chance definitely take a look at pita's planters i have two videos so far but i told lupita who is the owner that she needs to message me anytime to get a restock because i would love to continue to film her her amazing plant shop but going back to this callaways you notice how callaways has a variety of different plants whether it's outdoor plants tropical plants landscape plants trees and succulents so i am trying to diversify the amount of plants that i show whether it's succulents or cactus like this one right here super cool love the color of this just that ghostly gray almost light blue color that pastel look is beautiful and i just don't know a lot about succulents it would be something that i would need to really do research on before i can try to grow succulents and that's the thing like this one right here i know about chicks hen and chicks succulents this one actually produces a lot of babies and let me show you what i'm talking about notice how it has a lot of baby shoots you can literally nip those off cut them off stick it on top of soil spray you know mist it and it will just root itself super easy and that's the thing i like about um, succulents is that they are easy to propagate 
I'm just surprised that I have not gotten all obsessed about, you know, um, succulents. I even like that they have different pinks and different types of colors. So I just have to take a look at it. And you can see right here, this is another Crassula. I don't know if this is the Golem. I'm still learning a lot about my jade plants. So I have a variegated jade bonsai that I made from um, bonsai, pre-bonsai jade plants that I bought at Callaway's. It's doing extremely well. And you can see over here, this is a nice bronze copper look of a, of a um, succulent. And you can see that right over there, that was an olivera plant. And they've just got different types of um, succulents. Now this is an Eonium Black Rose starter planter. Beautiful. Look at that. Again, I love dark foliage plants. This one is only for $3.99, but this is an Eonium that could grow pretty quickly as well. And they can actually get fairly large. And then I want to show you another dark um, succulent here. Now this one is a little bit pricey for $39.99. So this is $40 for this succulent. Um, I wouldn't buy it for that price. Um, and that's because maybe I'm just not um, as aware of what type of succulent that is. That might actually be a rare or uncommon succulent. But you know, that's the thing. Um, whenever I do plant shopping videos, sometimes I will go to a big box store and there will be like a plant that's like uncommon or rare and people will just walk by it as if it wasn't anything. And here I am just getting super excited i remember going to like um kroger where they had a bunch of those monster thai constellations and people would just walk by it and then eventually it got you know the i'm sure that the plant community in the dallas fort worth area found out about those 29.99 monster thai constellations and literally wiped them out i have yet to find some monster thai constellations at walmart i really do want to find a large um monster thai constellation so we'll see but i do uh, want to do another monster thai constellation giveaway so please stay tuned for that um i am shipping out that monster thai constellation to the winner um this week i did i wanted to hold off until i can actually take the time to pack plants it's the same thing with um, um planting with pete's plants i am going to just ship it out on tuesday which is typically my day off i didn't want to go ship it this weekend because of the holiday i don't want plants kind of just sitting there and hopefully the weather will still be like an overcast because it has gone a little bit hot at texas and here is another purple version of the hen and chick succulent. And then you can see right over here, they've got another succulent. This is an Echeveria for, um, I think, $3.99. So these are starter succulents. You can make a succulent arrangement. If I am going to grow succulents, I definitely want to collect more of the Eonium succulents. The Eonium Pink Witch is a fabulous succulent. Um, it is a little bit more pricey. I do want to buy it from an Etsy seller, and um, hopefully I'll get to that. But I think I'm going to wait to buy those types of plants until I come back from my vacation in the Philippines. You know, it's about 34 days um, before I fly out. I'm super excited because I cannot wait to show all of those tropical plants, those aeroids, and even try to go visit in a couple of plant shops in the Philippines. You know, I wish I'd be able to take some of those plants back to the US, but obviously I will not be able to. So I will just make lots of content. Um, I am gonna miss being able to get on those live premiere chats. It is a different um, time zone. I think um, the Philippines is ahead by 17 hours. So we're gonna see. And that's the reason why if you guys are seeing um, videos um, that are scheduled to premiere like at the end of June, those are my compilation videos. And I really hope you guys will still um, engage and watch some of those past episodes. But, uh, really, I just wanna have a long three hour video for you guys to really enjoy and um, have like a, a nice chat hangout spot but you can see here this particular Kelly um, this particular Callaways has so many different types of caladiums and notice how there's just a sea of caladiums like tables and tables of caladiums and notice that most of the caladiums have such beautiful colors um, and it's interesting that these um, plants are not really that expensive like the this caladium right here is for $2.99 that is a nice plant that you can make into just a nice house plant as well. Now, all of these caladiums, if you're going to grow them outdoors, they definitely need to be in more of a shaded area. You don't really want to overwater them. Um, they do go dormant, though, in the winter. I haven't really heard of any caladiums that have like been able to stay active in the colder months. Now, maybe if you give it a lot of heat and you provide a grow light, it, it might actually do... Um, it may not go dormant, but for the most part, people say that you should just cut back your caladiums, let them um, dry out, let the bulbs dry out, and then let them come wake back up in the um, 
late spring early summer you know caladium bulbs typically start to to actually um sprout when the the the, the weather is uh, warmer that's what i'm trying to say but you can see red caladiums pink caladiums white caladiums so we're just gonna walk by and take a look at all of these Here is another dark um, Kong coleus. This one has a little bit more maroon burgundy colors. Look at the, the veining on the undersides of the leaves. I have a couple of coleus Kong plants, but I may end up getting some more. The only thing about Kong coleus is that their leaves do get really large. I want to be able to grow some of these coleus plants over the winter indoors. So I don't know if that would actually last very well in, in an indoor section, but we'll see. And then let's see what else we have let's see what else we've got more um of this coleus this is a coleus wasabi for 6.99 i really love that as well and what i like about the coleus wasabi is it's got the neon um color but it also can take a lot of sun like full sun and it will do fine it is a large growing coleus plant i have quite a bit of them and i was actually able to get some on clearance at walmart for two dollars and fifty cents so i planted two stocks i plan on cutting it back though to get some more um thicker growth and then over here are some pentas flowers these are um, cluster flowers that i really like as well look at those pink blooms they almost look like kalanchoe flowers um, i would be mistaken for a kalanchoe if i didn't look at uh, closely the the leaves and you can see we've just got a lot of different types of flowers look at that crane right over here it reminds me of my origami paper cranes and you know plant foldies if you really go through some of my really old videos i have hundreds literally hundreds of origami paper crane ASMR video so check those out um, I am encouraging people to really look at some of my plant um, playlists in my YouTube playlist you would be able to binge some of those if you're just wanting to relax and hear somebody talk about plants definitely check out my playlist and definitely check out this coleus plant so I don't know what this particular coleus name is I do love that it's just got very large neon color leaves I would like to get this as well although this one's a little bit pricey for $34.99 right next to it though looks like a coleus campfire this one is only for 12.99 that is a huge plant for 12.99 and that's the thing about coleus plants if you're looking for a plant that has a lot of variety a lot of colors and is inexpensive and easy to propagate get yourself a coleus plant you know i talk about that in all of my videos i've been able to influence a couple of plant foldies to get some like one of my plant foldies alfred from canada so excited that you got some coleus plants um and you were able to propagate or cut a rooting in water and put it in soil you i um please keep me updated on your coleus um progress and you can see here this is a really nice new guinea impatient so this is a a plant that definitely needs to be more in a shaded area impatient typically need to be unless it's a sun patient plant and then you can see right here this is a um wedding train coleus plant so this is more of a trailing coleus plant with like smaller foliage i actually want to get one where i can grow it into a bonsai so we'll see and then this is a mix of wizard select um coleus so i don't know exactly what a wizard select coleus is obviously it's a different type of coleus you know you've got mainstream coleus sun coleus now you've got some wizard um mixed coleus so i do like that it's got red orange and yellow and then this one right here is a coleus I don't have this is a spitfire coleus it has more narrow leaves um i may get this today so i know for a fact i don't have this but i may not try to spend a lot of money today there might be a couple of plants that i pick up um this is a plant though you know coleus are very accessible they're easy to find especially at callaways so this is pretty much the majority of um where my Cal um, coleus plants have come from is callaways nursery they just keep bringing in different varieties and then you can even see right here this is another wizard select mix so they've got different types of um, coleus plants i have all three of these varieties as well the one on the very right i have a huge hanging basket of that i've been able to take propagations from and that's the thing plant foldies i want to be able to share some of my coleus propagations with you i may do some more coleus giveaways or plant giveaways so if you are not on instagram and you want to go on instagram definitely check it out and see if you can um be part of that 
um, plant giveaway. And then also, I just love interacting with you guys. I feel like Instagram is going to be the fastest way to get um, a message to me. And I just like that. And, you know, I want to make sure that we have a community where plant foldies can just get together. I am working on Facebook. I, I don't have a current Facebook account, but I may need to go ahead and just create one for a, you know, the the youtube channel grow fold so we'll see but you can see right here um more beautiful um caladiums and these are for 14.99 so these are the in and out caladium so you can grow them indoors outdoors i want to get more caladiums um there's so many varieties like look at how beautiful the leaves are the one at the very far back i like that caladium as well um, i like the red veinings of the caladiums and you can see there's some more green white ones more red ones so it really just depends on your aesthetic i am um, you know think about some of these caladiums and i think about you know maybe even getting one of those handmade um, planters at pita's planters if you haven't checked out that video check out pita's planters beautiful plant shop in dallas and i have this this is a trade scanthia velvet mine has grown so much and has gotten pretty thick i don't want it to trail i actually want it to grow tall so i may get stakes and just let it grow up um beautiful plant you know some people consider it ground cover i'm currently growing it outdoors and you can see tax-free holiday i'm so excited about that and then we have some purple heart so i have the variegated version of this and to my surprise when i got home there was like an actual steak uh, or not stock stock that cut um, like broke off so i went ahead and chopped it up i got about six cuttings and i'm gonna root it in water and make another plant and then you can see right here these are huge conchalis do you see how my hand it's bigger than my hand so you can see that there are so many sizes and colors on coleus plants i know that i've shown you quite a bit of coleus plants today but you can't um, really blame me especially at callaways there's just a lot to look at and this is a conchalis that i might try to get again you know conchalis I'm just curious to see what like a huge one would be um, if you were to grow this in a landscape I'm sure it can get really large but I'm sure I'm not sure how um, large they can get and then over here they've got some more plants um, right here these are a uh, miniature sunflowers the ones that these this is called the smiley um, this one is a beautiful cute sunflower now obviously the name itself you need to make sure that you put this out in full sun this is a, um, a flower or a plant that will not do in um, shaded areas sunflowers definitely need full sun i love fuchsia um, plants as well these fuchsia flowers are beautiful look at these these um blooms they look like little bells and little trumpets it's really nice i love the purple and then also the fuchsia color the pinks on it beautiful plant um, i've seen it a lot of big box stores um offered as a hanging basket and you can see we've got some more um, sunflowers here so these are more of the container varieties of sunflowers i have quite a bit of sunflower seeds actually i grew a bunch last year i don't have any in my landscape but they are beautiful um, i find that the the black or dark foliage sunflowers are, are something else they're beautiful and this is a Senecio, Senecio um, angel um, wings, beautiful plant as well. This is another plant that when you touch the leaves, they feel very velvety and soft. It doesn't even feel like a real plant, but obviously it is. Look at how gray and ghostly it looks. And then we have some straw flowers right here. And then we have a bunch of beautiful dark um, flowers, purples and lavenders. These are aster flowers right here. And this is for $12.99. Look at how beautiful that is. Um, and that's the thing about Callaway's, lots of diversity. So whenever you are looking for more diversity in the plant selection, I would always say there is more diversity at a local plant nursery versus a big box store. And that's why it's important for me to really just show you um, these plants. Like I have never seen this plant right here. I can't pronounce the name. This is for $12.99, but look at that um, underside on the leaves. It's got several layers of interest. Obviously the flowers and the flowers are a unique shape. They've got clusters plus the nice green foliage, plus the purple veining, and then the purple undersides. Many um, levels of leaf interest. And then I have this coleus as well. I love the dark foliage coleus. These are the Perla coleus um, series. I really like that just because it has some subtle veining. Now the coloration on this is actually a little bit better when you give it a little bit more bright light. Now this is one that doesn't um, take very well in full sun, but you can see even these flowers right here as I pan over, it's just absolutely stunning. 
these um, coleus are absolutely stunning as well. And the thing about it is, notice how this one is a little bit more full. It looks like there were, um, these might have been cut back a little bit because the leaves are a little bit smaller, but they're a little bit more full. And then notice these beautiful blooms. These are the kangaroo paws. And we're going to walk over here. Plant folies, let me know what you think so far of some of these plants. Again, I want you guys to engage and leave some comments. Um, this is another coleus I may have, but these are only for $12.99. Um, these are super cool. I really like the green foliage right there. The dark um, stems. There's just a lot going on. And again, this is a very full coleus plant. Very uh, much not leggy at all. And that's another thing about coleus plants. They can get leggy. So the more you trim it back, the more bushy it will be. And look at this beautiful white caladium right over here. So I don't really know all of my caladium plant ID. So that's something that I need to get a little bit more familiar with. But what I do know about caladiums is they just have beautiful foliage. It's another plant that is underrated. It's another plant that most people would not think to grow indoors, but they make great indoor plants. As well as these beautiful, look at these. These are some beautiful kangaroo paws. I first saw kangaroo paws actually at a big box store, Lowe's specifically but I didn't realize that they had more um, colors for kangaroo paws. I don't really know a lot about them. So for those that know about kangaroo paws and care tips, please leave that in the comments. And I'm gonna pan over here again and just show you some more of these um, coleus plants. These are the perla coleus plants. And this one is also a perla coleus plant. I actually don't have this one as well. I have one that looks similar, but look at how beautiful that, um, that leaf is. It's just got green and then the cream coloration in the middle of it is actually a beautiful plant um, again coleus plants i have started to really follow a lot of instagram accounts on coleus plants and i have been doing some more research there are a couple of coleus youtube channels i may eventually do a more like niche uh, version of a youtube channel i may create one of those eventually but for now i am just excited to be able to show you guys like these different flowers so um, i showed you a bunch of the purple and lavender flowers here's another beautiful one as well um, I don't know a lot about this flower, but it is a beautiful one to take a look at. And you can see all of these beautiful sunflowers. Whenever I look at sunflower, though, I think of a sunflower just making anybody smile. It just has a way of lifting somebody's mood. And that's the thing about plants, plant foldies. Like every time I go look at a coleus plant, for instance, I get excited. I just get happy. There is a level of um, comfort that I get from plants. There's a lot of therapeutic benefits by just growing plants or even looking at plants and uh, I have been given you know feedback uh, positive feedback about how some people just literally um, may not always just watch my my YouTube um, videos but just listen to me talk so if you guys like doing your chores or just hanging out and unwinding I am so glad that I have become a vessel for your relaxation and that's the reason why I push myself to do um, one hour plant shopping videos or just videos about plants um, I don't have a script I you know the intent of a lot of my plant shopping videos or just videos that I post on YouTube is to be more organic, be more candid, and be less um, scripted. I think that that's what uh, makes my, my videos a little bit more unique. I want to try to be as authentic as possible. And you can see here, these are what they call the flowering maple. So I have one of these. I have the red one and I have the orange one. I would love to get a variegated version of this. Now, this one was actually a plant that I would like to grow indoors. I was able to see another plant YouTuber, plant influencer, Harley G. She actually grows this indoors too. So this would be a plant that I would consider growing indoors. And you can see right next to it, there are a bunch of like spring cactus. These are for $14.99, beautiful looking colors. Like I love the orange look on it. And then we've got some more different varieties of it. Now I would like to grow those cactus because I did hear that they are fairly easy to grow. And I want to show you this right here again, like all of these features of caladiums. Look at that, that is beautiful. Can you imagine that being grown indoors? as like a focal point just because it has so many colors and i want to show you the spring cactus blooms when it's actually open look at how beautiful that flower is let me know in the comments if you are a fan of like spring cactus thanksgiving cactus um christmas cactus that's one thing that i have you know another cactus i would consider growing into my home just because of the blooms and i want to pan over here and show you the sea of wax begonias 
love that i love how it's just got that you know fiery red color about it and then you have mixtures of white pinks and reds so it's just really nice and then we're gonna go ahead and just uh, pan over here and show you this really delicate looking bougainvillea but these are all wax begonias for a dollar 99 you can grow those also indoors um, they can take full sun as well so now we're gonna go walk back inside and I'm going to show you some of these house plants or indoor tropical plants. So they've got a bunch of like indoor trees. These are ficus benjaminas. That's the variegated form. Ficus larata or fiddle fig leaf. Those um, two plants right here on the very left require a lot of light. So just make sure you are providing a lot of light. We've got a bunch of palms. They also require a lot of light. And all of these um, plants are, you know, indoor trees. I like the look of it. I like that um, ficus audrey right there in a tree form. And you can see that a fiddle fig leaf or ficus Lerata. Look at how large that is. And they've got some pothos as kind of like ground cover. That's quite interesting. And you can see just how beautiful this ficus audrey is. I have one growing in my backyard, actually. Um, I grow it in full sun and it's doing very well. And you can see that they just have large foliage plants. And that's the thing about Callaways. Again, it is a plant nursery that just does very well. I love the fact that it is just amazing. And you can see that they have these large ZZ plants. Now ZZ plants, one of the easiest plants to ever grow. Please buy yourself a ZZ plant if you're starting an indoor um, plant collection or even if you are a professional or advanced person that grows like super rare aeroids, I still think you should add a ZZ plant. Like who doesn't like common plants? Common plants are common because they're easy and they're readily available. And I am a big advocate when it comes to plants bringing you joy and not bringing you stress. Stress comes from plants that are a little bit more high maintenance. I'm not gonna lie, calatheas stress me out and that's the reason why I grow calatheas in water because they are less stressful that way. Lots of beautiful Philanopsis orchids and check this out guys. Look at this beautiful variegated orchid, $24.99. I was able to find a variegated orchid, a smaller variety um, at Kroger's and grocery stores, but I want to go ahead and pick up a Philanopsis orchid, the variegated form. These are pretty sought after and actually $24.99 for a variegated um, orchid is not bad. What I like about it is after the orchid is done blooming, there's still quite a bit of interest through the variegated leaves. I've noticed that the only variegated um, orchid I've seen has those purple blooms. So I don't know if this is just a specific cultivar. So plant folies, let me know in the comments if it is a cultivar. Let me know if you would buy the variegated orchid. What other variegated orchids have you seen? Do you feel like the pricing for $24.99 is fair? Because all of these... Um, Philanopsis orchids are just everywhere. You know, that's the thing that I will say about Philanopsis orchids. They're readily available year round. And you can see right over here, we've got a bunch of, um, we've got a bunch of these beautiful, um, water fixtures is what I'm trying to say. And then we've got a variegated Chiflera. I'd love to get a, um, a, a fountain like this in my backyard and grow like this um, philodendron rojo congo. I think that's what it is, but this one is for $599, that, um, that fountain. That's pretty cool. And that is another easy to care for philodendron. Look at how large the leaves are. And then you can just see that these Philanopsis orchids are in full bloom right now. Look at that yellow one. Now with Philanopsis orchids, you want to grow these in a medium where they're just literally in orchid bark. Now I see that they're growing in sphagnum moss um, right now. Honestly, I wouldn't grow um, orchids in sphagnum moss because sphagnum moss holds moisture a little bit longer. Um, orchid roots are better off in a drier um, situation because their roots would actually rot. Um, you never want to grow an orchid in soil. That would definitely kill it um, because of root rot because most of the time orchids are what you call epiphytes. So they just literally cling onto like tree bark things like that and grow on something and that's how they get their, their roots actually just get a lot of their water from the actual ambient moisture but you can see look at all of these different um, flowers they've got many different faces and we've got another sea of monstera deliciosa so here's the thing about monstera deliciosa what i like about monstera deliciosa is that they are um, common but they get very large they're easy to take care of and readily available and as i pan over here this is just such a large callaways nursery i know i have featured this um, this nursery several times sometimes i've featured it where it was extremely full i will say it's 
it's not as full indoors as it has been typically. I've noticed that they move some of these plants around, like a lot of their Hoyas got moved to this table right here to kind of condense things. But for my Hoya lovers, I'm gonna go ahead and feature a couple of different Hoyas. So here are proven winner Hoyas. This is a variegated Hoya Wayetii, or what people would call a Quintiana. This is only for $9.99. Um, fair price for a Hoya, look at how beautiful that is. It looks like it's sun-stressed as well. It has the, that pink or red um, color. That's when you know that it's been given a lot of light. That's really the term on sun-stressing a plant when the plant starts to give you different colors. This one is a Hoya Sea Stones, and this one is also by... Um, proven winners this is one that i will get to um, planting with pete in addition to some of the other plants he was looking at you know i was surprised that he wanted to do a plant trade but i was able to get a philodendron heteracium gabby so i am so thankful so excited and you know that's the cool thing about the plant community sometimes you'll be able to find um, a plant that is not as expensive because you've been able to make a connection with somebody who's willing to share a cutting trade a plant etc etc so um as long as we get, maintain this positive community of um, plant lovers um, i will continue to make these videos you can see this one is a hanging basket of hoya carnosa this one isn't as variegated i'm not sure if it's a crimson princess but you know hoya plants what what's interesting is if you can get them to bloom i have yet to get mine to bloom for 19.99 this is a hoya compacta um just a hindu rope not it's not the variegated one i do think that it is a little bit private see for that size but Hoya Compacta I would love to get that but I'm afraid of getting mealybugs and mealybugs just on a Hoya Compacta would be very difficult to get rid of here is some Hoya Publ Publicaeus on trellises for um, $29.99 that is not a bad price at all and this one is definitely growing look at how some of their their um trailing has actually kind of tangled itself up they're all friends now but it's just interesting the growth patterns of a Hoya and then you can see right here another Hoya um, Wayetii, variegated Hoya Wayetii or Quintiana. That one's for $29.99. Here is a Hoya Crimson Queen for $29.99. Look at how beautiful that is. And so for all of the Hoya lovers, the Hoya heads, this one is for you. This one's a little bit sun stressed with that pink beautiful plants i never really paid attention to hoyas but now i have actually gotten into them i am afraid that i'm going to end up getting like a hoya obsession just kind of like coleus but the difference between coleus and hoya is hoya are a little bit more expensive than coleus plants and then over here we've got a ficus elastica burgundy not burgundy i'm sorry ruby now to get that ruby coloration you want to make sure you are giving it more light otherwise you're not going to get that like red tint on the leaves and then this one is an interesting plant it looks like a cough a, like an oversized coffee plant this is an alpine plant for um uh 15.99 or 16 or 14.99 somewhere around there nice um foliage it's got some nice shine to it beautiful plant i don't know a lot about it though so just let me know in the comments if you have any idea of what the plant care tips are and then we, we've got some variegated um, philodendron burly marks right here this one is for $99 in a six inch planter. So I remember this plant being way more expensive like three to four years ago. It's still quite pricey though. I wouldn't pay that price. And the only reason why I'm not as into this particular philodendron is it is one that will revert very quickly. It's just very unstable in terms of its variegation. Like you could flood it with light and it could still turn green. Now a philodendron I would buy, this is for $19.99, is a philodendron summer glory. Look at that beautiful bronze look about the leaves it's got a satin shine about it and it is a plant that is fairly easy to grow i don't think it's nearly as up spider mite prone and it's a fast grower and then we just got more plants right over here now i am tempted to buy both of these quarter line tea plants because they're the compact version like this one i've seen before but it's super cool and this is only for 16.99 there's three of them I love the pink um, edges of the leaves, the dark foliage as well. So it checks box, you know, it does have both checkbox that I like for a plant. Um, this one I would attempt to grow indoors just because it's a little bit more compact. So it'd be easier for me to spray it down in neem oil. Um, I would think that this would need a little bit more light though grown indoors. I do like that, but I also like the more compact version of this Cordyline Hawaiian uh, or Cordyline Kiwi. So I've gone to Home Depot and I've showed this in previous videos where this Cordyline Kiwi was extremely large this one seems to be more of the compact type so I'm, i think i'm gonna go ahead and pick this one up since it is tax-free 
um, this weekend and look at how beautiful that is. I mean, let me know in the comments if you would buy this cordyline plant. I am definitely going to get this one today since it's not a bad price at all. It's a pretty healthy looking plant. And the thing about it is if this plant doesn't do, do well for me or I'm not satisfied with it, I can always return it at Callaway's. They do have a great garden rewards program. Um, you know, and the funny thing is whenever I do like a return for a plant at Callaway's, I end up buying three or four more plants. So it's not like they ever lose money from me. I ju it just gives me another reason to get another plant or two or three. And then here is another ficus elastica taniki. Love the look of this one as well. It's got a beautiful um, variegation on it. That one's more of a highly variegated plant. And notice how Callaway's um, puts all of their same type of genus plants on a table. I like that a lot. This one is another type of ficus plant that I don't know too much about. What I do know is all of the plants that I'm grabbing right now, showing you all of these ficus plants, like this fiddle fig leaf, they all need um, high, high light consistency on just the watering so you don't want to like not water it for a month and then water it. it it really likes that schedule and they also like to not be moved around a lot so i do love aglonemas aglonemas are still in the top three on my plant collections they used to be number one but this one is an aglonema romeo for $16.99 so they have the juliet version which looks exactly like this but the romeo is just got larger leaves they're a little bit wider whereas the juliet is smaller and um, has more narrow leaves but the pattern is still the same that green on green variegation and then we have a monstera Thai constellation for $499 a mature one one that already has a couple of baby shoots coming from the the lower nodes but look at how beautiful and fenestrated these leaves are i would say years back three to four years ago this would be in the thousands so now you can buy like mature monster thai constellations for a better price and if you want this aglonema this one is for $29.99 um, this is a beautiful aglonema it, it looks different and you can see that it's got one two three four growth points new babies that are coming out of the mother plant and then this one looks different i don't know what this um, aglonema plant id is it's got more of a gray silvery tone about it it's a beautiful plant as well. I love aglonemas. I need to treat them a little bit better. Um, even though they are low maintenance plants, I literally will not um, water an aglonema for a month when I need to just water it a little bit more than a month. Um, they are a little bit drought tolerant, but again, you know, whenever you're not giving the plants the best care, they become more susceptible to spider mites. Here is another um, in, uh, Swedish ivy right here for $12.99 growing in a hanging basket. That's super cute. Love that neon color. And then I just want to pan over here again and show you these bromeliads. I love the colors of these bromeliads. Like this one specifically is highly variegated. It's one that I would definitely add to my collection. It's one that I am all about. And it's just quite interesting right here. Really like the look of that. Really love all of the colors that they have. And then chrysanthemums too. These are for $19.99. So like like I haven't really done a lot of research of chrysanthemums. I never really paid attention to them until I started seeing some of the pink coloration. You know, they remind me of like a more colorful version of a um, bird's nest sansevieria or snake plant. But what a gorgeous looking plant nursery. Now, I know that the first part of this video was big box store. I hope that you guys have still stuck around and actually looked at all of these plants. Um, because Callaway's Nursery, if you are visiting the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you love plants, definitely go to a Callaway's Nursery. You will not be disappointed. You'll be able to see all of these gorgeous plants. Um, even Proven Winners just um, provides for Callaway's. Like these ones are the um, hybrids of Fetonia. This one is a um, Fetonia Broadcast. Look at how cool that color is on a Fetonia. And then this one too has smaller foliage. This one is... Um, Fetonia Nightly News. Look at how cool that is as well. It definitely is some news to me in terms of just the new um, hybrids that um, Proven Winners has. And then we've got some um, assorted alocasia here. Now these ones are for $14.99. And then we obviously have Syngonium. So Syngoniums is another easy to care for plant. They prefer bright indirect light. They can tolerate lower light conditions. But what happens is when you give it lower light conditions, they will be a little bit more leggy and not as full. You definitely don't want to 
underwater a syngonium because they don't do as well if you let it dry out completely so just you know a couple of tips from when I, you know from my experiences and then obviously with like rex begonia you never want to get the tops of the leaves wet nor do you want to get the the stems or you know any of that wet just because it will rot away you want to bottom water um rex begonias and you know people have asked that question well what about the wild i'm not 100 percent sure what their growth habits are in the wild but what i do know is if you do let the stems or canes of these uh, rex begonia get wet too long they will rot away and they'll end up killing the plant like but, but you know who doesn't like rex begonias at least i love the color of them especially the dark um, foliage ones but I will be ending this video soon. I just want to show you a couple more plants at this Callaway's. You know, I am excited that I was able to get a lot of this filming done today. Um, I will be hanging out with some family for Memorial Day weekend. I'm surprised that I was off. It happens to be, you know, my weekend off. So I rotate um, weekends. Every other weekend is when I um, do that. But we will see um, what that all looks like. So. I wanted to go pan out one more time and show you these beautiful variegated Philanopsis orchids. Let me know if you um, would buy it, but plant foldies as always, please like, subscribe and join these live premiere chats. Leave a comment for me at the very end. I will get some more plant videos out for you. Check out my local plant nursery videos um, from last week. And as always, um, stay happy, be kind, I'm happy plant, you know, plant growing and you know just ask me any questions you want on the comment section i will definitely keep you posted on all of the other plants that i will find but i am excited that i was able to find these variegated philanopsis orchids i was really surprised because i thought i wouldn't be able to find those um in a while but they are here they are at callaway's nursery so if one callaway's nursery has it multiple nurseries will definitely have it um, all of these philanopsis orchids again can really light up a space all right this is richie at growfolds i'll see you on the next one bye